Oh, I didn't mean to hit it again. Shit. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Um, fake audience laughter. Hello and welcome to episode 332 of the Hooniverse podcast. Uh, I'm not going to introduce ourselves first because first things first, Ron, have you seen Top Gun yet? No, man. I, I'm geeked. Everyone's talking about it. And our buddy Anthony texted me, I guess, leaving the theory like you have to go see Top Gun this weekend. So I will, uh, I will get around to it. I saw it this afternoon in IMAX at the Spectrum. Right. And um, I got to say, I like right, right away, right away sucked in perfect um the intro is almost like a redo of the original intro but it didn't matter the music was there um the action was there it it was awesome and um i mean i there was even a part towards the end of it where I'm, i i didn't i didn't get emotional but i could feel feelings i could feel feelings um that the movie kind of takes me back because uh in 1986, when the first one came out, my dad was in the Navy. I was six mm -hmm. years old. That's when Miramar was still a naval base. It's been a mm -hmm. Marine base for years. Um, and we used to go food shopping on the base. So we would drive by Fighter Town USA and all that stuff. So, like, I've always been. No shit. I, I, I could. Re how yeah, I could. How long are you guys out here? Um, eight years when I was a kid. Sick. Yeah. So I've, I've actually lived on this coast longer. Um now counting that time when i was a, a young one um i was still born on the east coast and then went back to the east coast and you know all that stuff um but those were some formative early years where you know the f-14 tomcat and all that shit and man it sucked me in so this movie was like a major nostalgia hit and it was just it was awesome the, the flying scenes were incredible um i mean tom cruise is you know outside of movies we can all have our various opinions of them but in the films, the dude gives his all and his movies are incredible. Sure. So, um, and I usually, I actually don't really like Miles Teller that much, the actor, and he was great as uh, as, as Goose's son. So it was cool. Okay. Jennifer yeah, Conley is yeah, back. I don't know him well at all, but uh, I don't know. He's just, I, I feel like he's just like a polarizing face even. Like, I yeah. Don't even know that. He, they, they did a good job of making him look like Goose's kid, but also, yeah. he, you know who he is though, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay, from Whiplash and all that. But Jennifer Conley was in it, and she still got it. So um, it, it was good. Um, but, Mr. Ron Baugh, I'm using that to transition into our first topic. Uh, since Top Gun's a throwback, our first car is quasi a throwback. Okay. See what I did there? Um, we're going to talk about a DeLorean. Smelt. There's a, there's a new DeLorean that was just shown off. Did you see the pictures of this thing? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yes, the pictures, the renders are beautiful. Um, right. It's called the DeLorean Alpha Five. Um, mm -hmm. It's the the people who bought the rights to the company years ago, based in Texas. Uh, they're trying to you know do stuff. Years and years and years ago, I, I think they might have come out with some for sale, but they they created an electric version. So it's that same DeLorean Motor Company that uh, that's basically been I don't know like resto modding like original DeLoreans. Yes. As far as I know, oh. yes, it's still them. Okay. I think I think they still have an office in Huntington Beach, oddly enough, okay. um, unless that's just like a repair shop. But they years and years ago at the New York Auto Show, I remember they showed off an electric DMC-12, so the original mm -hmm. DeLorean, but electrified. And that was neat, but it was, you know, that was, it was kind of a cool idea. They were going to sell them for like 100 grand, which at the time was like, oh, my God, so much money. And in today's yeah. market, they'd be like, it's it's 450, you know, like something stupid. Um but this new one, I'm going to pull it up so we can see it because, yep, let me just share it. I'm like a boomer when I'm sharing this shit. Uh, all right, pull it up. That is the DeLorean Alpha 5, looking at the Motor One website. Um, so, gullwing doors, four-seater, Ital design, handle the design, which is why it looks cool. Um, they're going to shoot for 0 to 60 and under 3, and they're going to shoot for a range of a minimum of 300 miles, which are just magic numbers in the EV space. So they're going to sh reveal it at Monterey Car Week on August 18th. So apparently there's going to be a version in the flesh to show off. But so you think 
that this car doesn't exist yet. These are just 3D renders. Yes. Okay. That's what I would believe here. Um, that's what I would believe. Um, but the, the, the design is cool. I just... Gorgeous, but... What the we, fuck does it have to do with DeLorean? Right. And are we ever going to see, I mean, besides the, the doors are the only thing, but that's, I mean, you know what, if they need to reinvent the name, I get it. So they own the, the, the rights to the name. So that part doesn't bug me. Um, but I, don't know, I mean, are we, ever, are we ever going to see one of these on the road? I'm, that would be great. It, it'd be cool. But like, I just don't get that. Like the DeLorean name, like it, it to me, it doesn't tug at any hard strings. Like, you know, John DeLorean's name has kind of been tarnished, you know, with his, uh, his embezzlement and fucking his, his scandals. Like, I, I don't, I don't think there's anybody that's like, oh man, we, we have to reinvent the DeLorean. We got to bring back the prestigious nameplate DeLorean. Like I, it could have been any other name and maybe I'd, uh, I'd be more accepting of it personally, but I mean, cars beautiful. If they have funding and they can make this thing a reality, awesome. But, um, I just don't get like the design, the name, like none of it right. like triggers or like excites me in any way. I'm just trying to see, I'm not trying to cut you off, but I feel like I got something in my teeth and I don't want to, um, I might, I might, yeah, I might right there. I think there's something right there. Um, but I think we're just gonna have to roll with it because I'm not stopping for toothpicks. So I'm gonna talk like we're gonna talk like this. Oh, um, yeah. So if this car gets made, I'll be impressed. Uh, obviously, it's gonna have a stupid price tag. It's gonna have all these are questionable they, numbers. They mention pricing? They didn't no, even... no, 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 no. I mean, yeah. they're they're still like in the very much claiming stage. Maybe they'll say something in, at Car Week because that's where they would have the people who could be in a position to buy it. Um, right. Like, I think one of the best sales days for Aston Martin is when they host stuff at Pebble Beach. Like, they literally close deals at Pebble Beach. Um, so see. maybe it'll work out for DeLorean. So we'll see. I mean, it's a brilliant sales strategy to get a bunch of drunk, rich assholes in it. And I'm sorry. If I'm friends with a number of those assholes, but uh, they're admittedly assholes. You know, get them together in a room and one up at each other and just like, oh, I got to have the one of one spec and like, you got that. I got to get this. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it definitely serves a purpose and uh, that's why it's still around and it's still supported. What the fuck? What was, was that? that? What was you that? that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was but, that? Um, Do you have a gas or a drag race outside? <laughs> I don't know, dude. There's been a, like a ZL1 Camaro that's been like parked outside my building the last couple oh. nights for like a little okay. like like parked illegally for like 15 minutes at a time and it's fucking loud. It's cam. So I don't know if it was that or what, but that sounded healthy. It's your boy, Zach trying to get your attention. <laughs> it actually could be, but this car's not cam. And, and it, it doesn't sound like that. It doesn't rev like that. His, uh, who's he got a grand sport Corvette. Nice. Um, all right. Uh, enough of the car. That's not real yet. Um, I spent a week with a real car, a real expensive car. Speaking of rich assholes. Um, not that I am one. I was driving one, a car that, one might drive uh, the Bentley right. Flying Spur Hybrid, plug-in hybrid. Um, it's it's neat. The idea of it is cool. Five hundred thirty-six horsepower is nice. It's it's just right there near what the V eight does. Um, That's please talk about that because that was disappointing when I read the script today and realized it was a V six car, not a V eight or V twelve. I had no idea. So that I didn't know. Not until it arrived, um, really? what engine was in the front? Because I didn't read up on it before it showed up, and then I'm starting to take my notes. What's that? It is a V6, yeah. It's like the 2.9 liter. It's that, it's that family 2.9 liter. Um, and it's the wrong engine for the car. Mm -hmm. um, it, cruising around in EV mode is amazing. You get, you know, 20 plus miles of range because it's a plug-in hybrid. It's, it's, you know, you really put some juice into it, and you realize so, how... Uh, how nice and how nice it's built you know right. um even with the audio system not pumping but the name audio system is sick um but the seats are great it's just there's a little bit of road noise there's really no wind noise it's just quiet it's very super luxury feeling and then if you dip what's into the throttle wheels? what's that what size wheels are on it 22s <laughs> yeah. but um the 
if you dip into the throttle and wake the engine up, because you can run it in hybrid mode, full EV mode, you can run it in just force it to save charge for later on. And that engine comes to life. And it's just it's it's a fine engine in other applications. I think on its own, it's like 410 horsepower. It is not a Bentley engine. Yeah. Um, the car doesn't sound good when the engine is on. It's harsh. It's buzzy. It's just like it kind of kills it. I mean, it still gets up and goes. Um, right which is amazing for a 5,600 pound car. Uh, it, it handled well. Yeah, it's heavy as shit. Um, the crazy thing is too, they had to ditch a lot of the handling stuff to fit the electric stuff. So it doesn't have, like the regular gas car has active anti-roll bars. This doesn't mm -hmm. have that. The regular car has rear steering. This doesn't have that. Um, it still handles way better than you would think a car like this should in the canyon or like on a road. You know, it's like, there's just a little bit more lean now, and but it's like a big, gangster ass car and and it, it handles okay i mean chassis these days are pretty amazing yeah um what, what is ev mode like though is it like is it how much horsepower torque does it make in ev mode like is it is it just for creeping around or is it you is can it quick in EV mode? the the electric motor on its own makes almost 300 pound feet of torque so mm -hmm. you know you get off the line no problem and you in ev mode you can go up to 80 miles an hour oh wow so you could cruise down the freeway, you know, with a charge. Um, it, it, it's good to go. It's you. It's very usable EV mode. It's not like as soon as you touch the throttle, it switches to gas. No, you can totally drive around. Like if you have charge, you can drive around all just in EV mode the whole time. And it's, it's really cool. Um, and then if you push through it, then you can kick the engine on or you can put it into sport yeah. mode and force the engine on and it runs as, you know, mm -hmm. just like a dual mode hybrid. Then there's a comfort mode, custom mode, and then there's multiple EV modes, depending on what you want to force the battery to do. Um, but it's, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not behind me. Uh, no, my Jag's behind me. <laughs> um, it's outside. Um, it's cool. The paint's sick. It's funny. There's a, what's that? You still have it? Yeah, yeah it, goes, like, it, goes, it goes back tomorrow. I, I extended it a little bit because I needed to get some more stuff. I'm going to see if I can actually, if I have it in my Instagram. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I have one picture of it that I can pull up. Uh, let's see. I want to do this like this, like this, and get this. I'm, I you never know. saw the interior of it. Was it like... Oh, it's like a dark blue with blue. red stitching. Sick. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can make this bigger and do... Oh shit! I didn't even realize it was that bright color. For yeah. some reason, I thought it was a baby car. Damn, that's sick. Yeah, it's sick. So it's light, and then like all the trim is black. Um, it looks sick. Uh, and then I'm glad the wheels aren't black though. Um, and it was funny today. See the the quad like headlights up front. Some dude at a stoplight. Um, because I had a I was at a blinker. I had my blinker on, and he's like he rolled his window. I was like, hey man, uh, one of your lights is out. I was like, oh thank you. And I'm like, what? And I turned the blinker off, and the light came back on. I was like, bro, you don't know about that Bentley life. <laughs> I mean, but that's like every car with daytime running lights these days. If they're in yeah. the blinker, so I don't know. I'm uh, trying to go over my mic stand. That's not gonna work. Level up, bro. Level, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate you looking out, but I don't need you. Um, yeah. Now, so the car is two hundred ten thousand um, dollars. That's it, honestly. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying that, but I mean, that's got to be. I hate to say it, but base spec. I mean, I imagine most flying spurs are three hundred. No, plus. no, 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 that no. Is. It's the the Mulsanne is the one that is um, is the one that's usually. Really? Yeah, you still make the Mulsanne? I think it's done now, but that was yeah. the king of hell. The base price of a flying spur is one ninety eight. Um. But this one had like a Mulliner package. With, that, what, with what motor combination? What, like what's base spec? Is it uh, I would assume it's, V8? that's a good question. I, it's probably the V8 is probably the base spec car. Um, I would have to imagine like, I, I can you build? Yeah, let's see if I, I'm on the configurator. You, you know what? Shit, we can yeah, share this. Can, we can share this yeah. shit too. Hold on. <laughs> No. We'll share it all. Um, so I'm on the configurator. And so uh, they have some like pre-built ones. Uh, flying Spur. I just want Flying it's Spur. It's sexy sedan, man. That shit looks so good. It is good. a good looking car. Yeah. So the V8 doesn't give me prices yet. No. V8 or hybrid. Uh, or Litra. I, I just. Uh, four I, liters. I, four Litra. Litra. Yeah. The Litras. I wish it would just. You know, your configurator sucks. You know that? Um, I don't want to, 
I don't want to go through this anymore because it's going to. It wants me to. Want you in their oh, there it is. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, it doesn't give me. Oh, you know what? Oh, it doesn't give you prices. <laughs> of course not. Just everything, every option, more than you can afford. Right. Kyle. Exa- yeah, pretty much. Um, so I think the V8, the base V8, is like 198. This one's 210. I think this car might be more than 210 though, because it says 210 approximately. That must be the base price, because then there's a list of options, and one of the options right. is the Mulliner Spec package, which is like right. the blacked out trim, leather headliner, metal pedals, metal gas cap, and a, and the wheels is twenty thousand dollars. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no way you're buying a two hundred thousand dollar fine. Yeah, this one's like, probably closer to like two sixty. If you poverty spec it, maybe, but right. like they're gonna, they're gonna option that. Like every dealer's gonna option like crazy. Like if they're gonna order a car, it's gonna be fucking. I bet you know a sixty, a hundred thousand dollars worth of options. I bet they don't order cars though. I bet they like sit down. You know. I mean, the, the easiest sale is a car that's in stock. That's true. But that is true. But it's also so hard to get cars, and with production being so limited, I I wouldn't argue that. 90% of the cars that are sold are for spec by owners. I would like to find that out. I might have to email Bentley and ask. And I know they said when they announced the hybrid that 50% of Bentley owners said, yeah, I want one. So, because the, there's a crazy. I've, I've, in the past, I've ordered cars, Bentley, Lamborghini, Rolls Royce for, you know, the companies or the bosses that, that I worked for. And it was, that was unique. Like, 10, 15 years ago, that was like, oh, like, you know, like it was like 1% shit to, to order a car. Right. Typically you just go and buy whatever they had on the lot, but it's, the model's completely changed in the last 15, 20 yeah. years. And now it's like, if you don't order a car, you won't get a car. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's a good point. Um, hmm. I would like to, uh, I want to email them though and, and find out what the deal is with that. Cause now I'm curious. Uh, but speaking of stuff in our price range or, Stuff, stuff you would think would be in our price range. So I, I think I've talked about this a couple of times. Um, I've got old Mustang on the brain. Um, yeah. I even emailed Zach Bowman to be like, hey, if you ever sell it, you know, let me know. And he texts me back right away. He's like, he's like, make me an offer. And I just sent him a picture of the Jag and he just sent like back a laughing gif. And I was like, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an appropriate response, Zach. Um, but his car is the reason I've been thinking about them. So much. Yeah. yeah, I mean... I won't. I don't know. I would, if, I, if you're in his position, I would consider that trade. Yeah. Is he in California? No, he's in um, Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, so it doesn't like the oh. carb certification. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It is no bearing for him. Value. No. Um, and uh, and a Mustang is like brain dead of a car compared to a Frankenstein, pseudo British, pseudo American, this thing. Um, so. This is, I posted this on Hooniverse.today, Hooniverse.com. Um, this is the best price I've found on Craigslist recently. This car, before I pull it up, it's a 289 V8, four speed. Um, and the asking price is 7,300 or best offer. Now that sounds like a good deal, doesn't it? <laughs> Hold up, I'm like, let me show you the car. Like, why, why are we not in this dude's driveway right because now? Because this is why. Checking this thing out. <laughs> it has no glass except quarter windows. Um, it has, no interior. Um, let's see if the ad's still up. Nothing. Uh, it has like no. It has interior. back seats. Nope. Wow. It's, oh, it didn't show up on the this side yet. I mean, it looks clean and straight. I mean, it's not. Is it painted? Um, it's like looks like it's primered. Um, right. So, oh, because it's the Shelby bumper. Oh, hold on. Let me go to the ad. That's what I wanted to do. Um, the fact, the fact that it's got chocks tells me that it doesn't have an emergency brake. Yeah, we don't. And we don't. We don't trust. It's got no lights. Neutral. I mean, I, I know those are easy things to fit. You know, lights and. Yeah. But that's the front. I mean, have you priced flash lights? Lights, I'm sure you get some lights. LEDs would be, I wouldn't even do. I mean, you get. You don't even need LEDs. Halogens are nothing. Seven inch rounds all day long. Um, that's the right. inside of it. That's. It has a back seat. Oh. What, what happened to the interior? I mean, I think this was just, they were in the middle of doing stuff, you know? And I mean, the engine clearly. Have frames that you could drop off in an upholster. Does it start? Does it run? I mean, there's no It fan. says car does not run. It? It's non-op. It's pink slip. It just, oh, so it's, 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 it's a one. 
it's, it's a 100 project and it's 7300 this is a two thousand dollar car you know not, not anymore. anymore clearly um i mean i think that car would sell actually sell for probably four to five right. grand, but still i mean that's way more of a project than you want to take and you don't need two fucking complete stripper projects right. But that's where we are right now, and that sucks. I mean, maybe in other parts of the country, there's some Mustangs out there, but then I'm dealing with rust, and I don't want to fuck with that. I don't. I mean, right. there's a reason I, I look around here. Um, but that that sucks. So if anybody out there has a line on a, a Mustang that makes sense, let me know. Um, and if I, I want to go back to Atlanta next month, you know, I was just there last weekend, and um, there's oh, we gotta, a we gotta, hold on, a, we got we got to rep our cities. Okay, all right, we're doing this. Okay, we got current World Series champions, possible NBA. It's gonna champions. be a tough battle. <laughs> yeah, it's totally. gonna be a tough battle. Series starts tomorrow. Ooh. Final starts Mr. Ball. Curry tomorrow. Is that right? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I don't. I don't envy. No. All right, you're going back to Atlanta. Because, well, I mean, I'm going back for a number of reasons. But w when I go back, one of the things I want to do is knock on the door of one of my neighbors who as a 65 Mustang fastback mm. that has not moved since 1990. It's under a carport. It was red. It was chalky as fuck. It was dusty as fuck when I started it. My grandfather and I started inquiring about it in like 1995. Oh, like, you know, we thought it would be a good project then. And the, the lady that owned it was a widower. It was her husband's car. And I remember in like the last time we stopped and inquired, I, I got my grandfather to go by because he's like, you know, he was like the cop of the neighborhood. Like everybody right. knew him, like he was well-respected in, in the community. So, you know, I knew she wouldn't pay any attention to me. Like some punk kid stopping by like, Hey, I want to buy your car. So, um, I got him to go by and she knew him and like, you know, was totally receptive, but she was like, Oh, I just saw that one sold for $50,000. So, I think I want thirty five thousand for it, and it's like, lady, that car has not started, driven, moved in twenty five right. years. Like, you've got to make some concessions here, and like, you know, you, you've got to understand that, like, what it's not going to take fifteen thousand dollars to make this a fifty thousand dollar car. And the car is still there now; it's under a tarp, and I just want to go by. Like this lady, unfortunately, like I have to say, like she has to have right. passed. So it's gotta be, you know, like her children or grandchildren that live in the house now. And, you know, I just, I just want to go by and see the car because it can't be rusted because like, it's not in a field, like there's, you know, it's not subject to rain. It's covered. Like it's gotta be clean and mostly original. Like it hasn't moved since the nineties. And the last time I saw it in like the two thousands, like the interior was all there. I mean, it could be rodent, rodent infested, yeah. but I know it's not rusted, right. but um, hopefully, you know, somebody in that household will be a little bit more reasonable nowadays and recognize it for what it is and just realize that, like, they could use the space more than they could use, you know, the money and they're not about to restore it right. themselves. So I really want to, I really want to, to, to work on acquiring that car just because, you know, it's something that has been like a target of my, my, my and my family's desire for like 25, 30 years now. So, well, keep me posted on that. I, I will check it out. Um, that sure. sounds great. Um, what are your speakeasy updates? I love this part. Um, and well, you already know, cause we tried to coordinate a meetup over there like several times this weekend and for different reasons, I just didn't make it in. I mean, it all adds up to me being just a lazy sack of shit, but, um, updates are, and that we can talk about now, Jason Whipple sold his R32 and bought an 85 GTI. And it's, it's Mars red, so it fits the color scheme. Like all the cars that are long-termers in, in the speakeasy are R32 GTR. He sold his R32. No, no, R32 G uh, Mark IV Volkswagen oh. R32. I, yeah, I thought you R32. said he sold an R32 for a GTI, and I was like, what? <laughs> well, he didn't trade, and so I don't know that it was even money. No, no, no. Like, I thought you were talking, talking about like a Skyline. Color. Okay. Right, I know, I know, but yeah, we're not we're not talking about anything of no, that no. value or rarity. But um, he sold that. I don't know if I if I spoke on this last week, but Vin sold his 
Oh yeah, yes, we yes. talked about that one. It, yep. It's, it's still in the uh, it's still in the garage, but uh, it's waiting for for transport. And he picked up an Evo right. Nine MR that uh, has like cams and like full bolt on wow. and shit. And it's white, so it also fits the uh, fits the uh, color scheme. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just went over yesterday for the first time in like a week, and uh, I was I just kind of detailed the uh, the Tahoe, took some pictures. Um, I absolutely plan on listing that thing for sale um there's a couple other things that i want to do to it um i have extra parts laying around like some led headlights i have like bumpers and grills and stuff and i want to just play around and make some match parts and like see kind of the final form that i wanted because i have a set of 20 inch rotor form that i want to put on it and it doesn't necessarily necessarily co uh, coordinate with the chrome bumper and the chrome grill. So I want to change a couple things out just so I can see, you know, kind of my vision for the sure. truck. But it'll, you know, I could easily return it to the way that it looks right now. So I'll probably do that this weekend. And then I'll list it for sale. And, like, you know, I'll, I'll list it for two different prices, you know, with this setup or with that setup. And it's easily transferable, you know, either way. If you want both, like, that'll be another price. So, that's uh that's pretty much all we got going on over there, but um you know, it's still serving its purpose and you know, keeping our cars clean and out of awesome. harm's way. That is I I love that place. And uh even though you didn't want me to come see it even though you didn't yeah, want dude. me to come see it this weekend, um I'll uh <laughs> That is not the case. But I didn't go over there myself mm -hmm. and I felt like a lazy second shit. I really wanted to ride in, I know. in the bit. I know. I, really I was ready to roll thing. over there. Um even though I really want to bring my Montero over there so I can meet those fools in the garage nearby because mm -hmm. i have questions yeah, um, sure. but we'll plan that yeah. i mean maybe this friday or saturday because uh i you know i'm down to go over there friday and saturday and they work right right okay yeah maybe we can do something on friday that might be good i gotta look at the uh, calendar um i'm supposed to go to the electrify mm -hmm. expo press days but i don't want to um <laughs> Okay, jumping over to questions. Start with Instagram. Uh, Cooley156, what is the proper way to wave from your car? I've forgotten how to do this, and I wave like Forrest Gump to Lieutenant Dan. Funny enough, so do I, um, but I don't usually wave to people. And you know what's funny? Yeah, I do. I do that. I Like hands on hips and everything. Um, my wife gives me shit about it, but she's right, and it's funny. Um, you know, it's funny if I'm driving a Jeep product, like a Wrangler product, uh, I feel like no one in California does the Jeep wave anymore, which is weird. Um, I get, is it a no, no, no. Jeep wave is just like just... Jeep, just right. Wrangler, wow. Wrangler. It's just like, yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Um, it's like a ubiquitous thing nationwide. And I feel like it's kind of died in California. I did get a wave from a Jag owner the other day, which gave each other a little nice. I was going to say, I feel like. That's the thing amongst any enthusiast yeah. owner group. Like, you know, I, when I was driving that, that gladiator, like I noticed a few people waving at me and I was just like, uh, like in, in Jeeps. And I was like, uh, mm, this, this isn't me. Uh, mm, so like, uh, right. Oh shit. That's but funny. Like, Mustang guys, Mustang guys, Corvette guys, I'm sure Ferrari and Lamborghini guys have their own thing. That's they just much wave more their wallets but, at uh, each other. No, they do this. Yes. They're like, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi, right, Keith. Right. Look at me. Um, or just fucking this yeah. out of their shit. Uh, <laughs> Jake up car. Would you rather spend a weekend in a rooftop tent or a Kyrie Irving Nets jersey? Fuck Kyrie. You know the answer to this one. You're asking that because of my stance on rooftop tents. I don't want a rooftop tent for my own vehicle. I will happily borrow vehicles that have them. Um, I was recently offered today the chance to spend time with another Land Cruiser 80 with a go fast on the roof, um, 40s with no lift, which is insane. And I would happily spend a night in a rooftop tent. F fuck Kyrie, I reiterate. <laughs> Crazy ass. Uh, Midnight Dory, what wheels should I put on a C6 Corvette narrow body having a hard time deciding? Ron, this is you. We have a brand called Cray that's specific Cray? to Corvette and we continue to do wheels. Okay, Cray, like, C-R-A-Y, that's <laughs> Big cray. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a number of, of styles in that brand that are specific to Corvette. Take, you know, factory hardware and shit, like perfect offsets, like not factory offsets, but uh, I would start there. That's uh, that's the 
easiest recommendation. I mean, there's plenty of brands that make, you know, custom one-off, you know, bespoke custom wheels for them, but it really you know, is something it that's really kind is of cray. in the box. Right now. Yeah, I just pulled it up because there's cray. a picture of a C8. Maybe I can find some wheels for my brother. Nice. All right. Now my brother has a C8. If I didn't mention that on the podcast, I know Ron knows. Um, right. There you go, Midnight Dory. Check out Cray, C-R-A-Y, because they Cray. Um, Evan J. Cruz, do you still love the transit crew as much as you did in your video review? Yes. If I was building a van life van, it would be a transit crew because you get the two rows of seating and then the cargo area instead of one row and then the cargo area. Um, Cause I need that second row for my daughter. Uh, and it'd be a good place to have my dog sit if we were back there too. Um, the, the dog could go further in the back. Yes. Transit crew rips. I wish someone at, at Ford would give me a SEMA build. I've always wanted to be one of those guys. They reach out to do a SEMA build. Um, no, I've done it. I've done it twice. Yeah. I could connect you with the phone. I mean, it's it's really not that hard. You just have to. Well, I don't know if they do it anymore. The dollar oh, car yeah, program. Dollar but, car. Um, you have to submit a proposal and fucking knock their socks off with right. Your fucking I, I, all I do. The last time I did, it, though, my my concept was so fucking sick that they fucking stole oh, it and shit. gave it to somebody else. Wow. Yeah, I wanted to do an expedition. I wanted to do an expedition. Um, I was like, we could, and I won't, this You're is like, who the fuck is Funk Master the, Flex? <laughs> since the, you know, the last like refresh of the expedition or whatever it was 20, it must've been 2017 or 2018. I submitted a proposal, proposal to Ford to basically build the ultimate like track oh, nice. day hauler. So like, an expedition that was lowered on wheels, obviously, you know, tuned with pullouts, you know, in the bed, you know, for all oh, your cool. tools and everything, like, you know, like a decked style helmet, storage. Your, uh, exactly. Exactly. And, um, along with, uh, GT 350 and I wasn't trying to get both cars for a dollar, but I just wanted the expedition. I was thinking about buying a GT 350 and I was just like, you know, we could coordinate this like trailer with the same wheels, you know, basically the same wheels on all on the, the truck, the car and the trailer. And, um, yeah, I was going to build a GT350 to, to match. And they ended up basically, we, I didn't get any of the vehicles, but they basically took my concept and gave it to another, uh, it was basically a manufacturer that builds body kits for Ford for their factory cars. Like they're not necessarily Ford performance accessories, but whatever they're like, you know, in-house like aftermarket options are, they, uh, they granted them an F-150 and a Mustang GT or EcoBoost. And I ended up making the wheels for all three vehicles for the wheel, for the, the, the truck, the Mustang and the trailer. And I was just like, this not, is uh, not what I planned. This is, you know, flattering, right. but uh, it would have been fucking way cool if you had just right. given me the shit. Cause this is my concept from the <sighs> beginning. Yeah. But, uh, it's right. That's the way shit goes. And, you know, it was cool to be a, a, a part of it. What's super funny is that I just saw that truck uh, driving oh, really? by my work last week. Yeah, it's a, a lowered silver uh, crew cab F-150. And I was just like, that looks familiar. And you like, you don't see no. those trucks lowered, especially no. not in Orange County. Like, so it slammed on like 24-inch 4G autos and it fucking cruised by. And I was just like, <laughs> That's funny. All my pitches consist of is tweeting at people till they pay attention to me. And that's why they don't work. Uh, well, they, they have a oh, specific sure. like, like process and it, you know, you can get it from the, the SEMA website, but I don't, again, I don't know if they've done it in the last two years and right. they pulled out a right, SEMA. Right, I'm right, sure right, right. Doing it. I'd have a better chance of pitching them for like Overland Expo next year, honestly. Um, uh, yeah, sure. and I want to do a full like van life, mountain bike storage, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I also want to, I wanted to talk to Mountain about just chipping it because it's that 3.5 v6 and 400 horsepower in the blink of an eye um oh i think really? so no i shit. think so yeah. at least in my head uh <laughs> commander 2v6 recommendations to keep wheels safe is there a style of lock that works better than others gorilla what is that explain gorilla is you know i mean it happens to be our, our in-house brand but it's also just like the most respected name and wheel lugs and locks and you know, just wheel. I don't know a lot. So they got, they've got, they've got a lock solution for basically what, how, how do, I don't know. Here's a chance to, if you wouldn't mind educating me, 
uh, how to what's the deal with like how do aftermarket wheel locks work? Wheel locks basically have a unique uh, okay. kind of spline pattern. So like each one like has instead of you know a, a hex you know a standard hex head, uh, they have like a, a unique like a uniquely shaped key that fits only one of those uh, uh, lugs or bolts on the wheel. And that makes it basically impossible to steal. Cause like if you, if you have a generic, you know, lug set, you can take off four out of right. the five lugs. Right. But then you get, you get to the key and you're going to struggle if you don't have it. Or if you get to the lock, you're going to struggle if you don't have a key, you know, if these were smart, they'd break into the car and find the key in the glove box or wherever. But like, you know, the, right, these right, don't right. have time for that shit. So it basically just slows down the process and it's a deterrent in that way because if a thief is to run up to five cars in a parking lot or on a street and like, you know, they have custom wheels or wheel factory wheels that are valuable, you look and you realize, fuck, this one has a key. Like, I'm not going to break into the car, risk the alarm going off, Move search on. through the car, Move hope on. to find the key, yeah. like spend all that time. So it's just like, all right, that's a hassle. I'll go to the one that doesn't have a, have a lock. So wheel locks from Gorilla, like, it's the yeah, I'm looking too. I'm just clicking everything. through, and there's like different shapes, manufacturer specific ones, right? Different colors, yeah. and oh, wow, it's one right. specific to the Krager. <laughs> like, it's uh, interesting. Uh, right. okay, neat. Yeah. Uh, oh, lug bolt lock, too. They do lug bolt locks, that too. If you have lug bolts, I, right? Exactly, bolts or, or nuts. But uh, that being said, I've never had wheel locks on any of my cars because my wheels have always been super unique and or I've had one finish or a completely different mm. style on each side. So, you know, that's another deterrent. But I mean, that's just some like inside baseball shit. It's just like if you have two different wheels on a car, like, fuck, like, you know, a thief Who is, is like, this guy? Know, like, yeah, defeated. Like, what the fuck is this? I'm never going to be nice. able to sell. This, um, right? There you go. Gorilla. Uh, that dude, Pasha, heading back east this summer, Block Island, P-Town, a gun quit. Yes, I am heading back east in like two weeks, actually. Uh, Bro, what are, what are uh, so Block what Island is a place in Rhode Island. P-Town is Provincetown down the Cape. Okay. And a gun quit is an amazing town in Maine. Um, and I'm going to none of those places, but I am going to flying into Boston. Got to pick my mom up in New Hampshire gonna drive down to i'm actually staying at callahan's place uh, for a few days too yeah nice. uh, one of ron's co-workers um is a mutual f uh, friend and i've rented his house before is he, is he including is he including the i don't know i told him i told him in, to but i don't know if he's going to what what is it what kind of car is it be a genie paso it's like italian body but like vw Here, I'm pull and uh, yeah and it was smart Star of, of the show in our booth at uh, Volks Auto Fair or whatever. I it's gotta called. pull That's up Sam Dobbins. Out. Oh god, this thing's ridiculous. Silly, silly car. Yeah, uh, I'm photo, trying to yeah. find the right one. But it's that one's a silly video. ass car. But it's got an uh, actually pretty dope interior. It's like all Recaro, all blue. It looks like it looks almost oh, like funny dinner, too. His, but like, his plate is like adventure or something. Hold on, let me share this yeah, shit because yeah, yeah. the car is sick. The car is so cool. Yeah, I didn't think so until I actually rode in it. And this thing experienced it. Oh, look at his little rotiform yeah. deal back there too. Is that another? Oh, this is all Sam. Sam's a great photographer. Um, so if we go back, uh, yeah. well, here's like a video of it so you can see. That is so cool. Those wheels look good on yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. On the wheels, it's way cooler okay. now okay. that it's on the wheels. Um, Before, I was just like, bro, what the fuck did you buy? He's a hardcore VW guy, though, right? Yeah, okay. No. Totally. All those guys are. They're like the I'm marriage hoping, VW community. Yeah, I'm whole, hoping yeah. it's there. I'm hoping my dog stops barking. But I'm also, I think my father-in-law's um, dune buggy is essentially done. So I'm also going to drive that. Speaking of Volkswagen stuff, because yeah. that's a chassis and engine, basically a pan from a Volkswagen bug right. um and the engine and all that shit and some unknown like i think what the hell it's like a i didn't realize that new england back in the day was a hot spot of kit cars there were so many kit car companies hmm. in new england back in the day it's weird and this was i think this one was called 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manufacturer. Like Car K A R was one of them. I think uh, Wildcat. I think is the model that my father in law has. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm going to try to drive it and I'll get video of it. Uh, Twitter at J Pasillo J Z X 71. What are the next batch of collectible cars? I think there was a. This is a. This isn't my answer, but I'm going to tell you there's a funny story in the New York Times. There's, there's a story in the New York Times. Lynn Woodward pointed it out to me um, because a, a journalist friend of hers wrote that those who wanted Defenders and have been priced out of Defenders because Defenders are bonkers, the thing they should turn to are first-gen Monteros, which is hilarious to me. Um, so I could make a, an argument that Vintage off-roaders are collectible, but they've been collectible for years. The funnier part was they interviewed someone else in this article who I don't know. Um, and this person says they've been hunting cars for clients. And this person thinks that they could see as high as 25 grand for a clean Gen 1 Montero, which that person is high. That person is high. Um, my car is not clean, but my car is nicely equipped and it's maybe worth 10 you know um and i wouldn't sell it for under 30 because i don't want to sell it right because yeah i don't want to sell it you can't replace um, it. but if, but if someone came to me and was like i'll give you yeah. 30 i'm like here's the keys enjoy your ride um <laughs> have fun you can keep all the shit in it i don't care you're stupid cool. for buying this um uh, but the next batch of collectible cars because <laughs> it's not vintage suvs those are already collectible um here's a weird answer Cause I can't think cause Radwood is already a thing, you know, that's vintage electric vehicles, like the first EVs. Like what if there's a cottage industry for like, Oh, everybody has these. Now I'm going to be a hipster. I want a first gen Nissan leaf, you know, like some weird shit. I could be totally wrong. I'm probably wrong, but it's not a bad bet. My only argument against that, and I'm I'm not educated enough about the technology in those cars, but I feel like the battery life, like it's atrocious, is suspect. Yeah, like, like they, they just don't last, and they don't hold a charge. And like, if you get into replacing batteries and shit, like what that, if what if basically it counts whatever whatever value what if that those things have becomes cheaper and easier though within the next five years, 10 years max, stretch it out. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I bought a first gen Leaf, but I swapped in this new battery tech. The car goes 300 miles. Like, I'm not saying we'll do that. That's pie in the sky stuff. I thought you were going to mention like the GM EV1 because that at least has some scarcity. Really get those. Yeah, you can't really get crushed. Those. Yeah. Right. They're, most of them are crushed. Like, and after like their lease period, like, so just after like three or four years, but like, <clears throat> like 10 years ago, I lived in West Hollywood and there was really? a dude, I had a neighbor that had one and it was clearly, he had it after whatever the, the lifespan of that vehicle was. And there was a Honda EV, EV, like around the same time, like around the same shape. I don't remember what it was called. Like maybe, maybe those, if you could like update the, the battery packs and the motors and shit, like maybe we had. I don't see those being enthusiasts. We had a guy who came to vehicles. Autopia last winter in the original, one of the original RAV4 EVs that, um, and this dude right. bought it new and he loved it. And it was in literally oh. perfect shape. And the guy was like, and I'm saying this with love and respect, delightfully crazy, like clearly loved it. So it was really interesting to talk to him about it, but he was like all in on this thing. And, and he was, a, he was a fascinating fella and the car was really neat. Um, but what's funny about those things is, uh, in Atlanta, back in the nineties, the Georgia, Georgia power, our electric company used the EV RAV fours as oh, yeah. like the yeah. meter checker, like so I remember, like, that was my first experience with an EV. I was, I was actually, like, fucking around in my yard. In my house in Atlanta, it has a wraparound driveway that goes around the back of the house. So you, and it's on a super steep hill. So I'm, like, in the yard fucking around. I was probably, like, raking leaves or some shit because that was my job. 
and this fucking EV uh, RAV4 goes was yeah. silent, like didn't make a noise, like just goes up the driveway. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And like, you know, like didn't check in, didn't like say, is it cool? You know, I'm going to check the meter. Like it just fucking drives around the house, finds a meter, checks it, and then just fucking drives away in complete silence. And I was just like, wow, that would be so nice. Cause I had a 5.0 Mustang with no cats, flow masters. And I was just like, that would be so nice to sneak in and out of fucking house with like, you know, I, I couldn't sneak home or out like ever. And I was just like, that is the ticket. Like ever since then, I've been just like, EVs, like, you know, there's a place. Uh, for that's, that's funny. But nice. that was 30 years ago, um, 25 years it's ago. It's an interesting question, Jay. We don't have a good answer for you is the is the short version of it. Um, I don't have a good answer. You What's your answer? answer? I don't know if it's a good answer, but I have an answer. Okay. It's just different than yours. Um, ah, man, I don't say know it. I, do. I mean, beer, yeah, I think uh, early 2000s, uh, AMGs and you know, Mercedes in general, but uh, especially like the SL55s, E55s, like they're they were rock bottom maybe just a couple of years ago. Like, they definitely this. started yeah. on the rise, but. But um, I still think you you can, if if your intent is to make money or add value, like I still think you can get in on those supercharged AMGs. The M cars of the yeah. same era have already exploded. I think the, yeah. the complexity of the, the Mercedes has sure. been their downfall and the reason why they haven't the, like, just exploded. But um, I think you can still get them for a decent price. And uh, most of them are low miles because they were enthusiast cars and people – didn't necessarily think we we're collector cars, but like they just didn't drive every day. And they, they were their weekend car. So, you know, uh, an AMG, I wouldn't be scared of like an S55, an E55 or an SL55 yeah. with like yeah. 75,000 with you there. miles on it. That's been maintained the, and driven. But the you know, timing not, of you not, saying not, that is funny because I just saw tweets like yesterday of someone pointing out a couple sales on Bring a Trailer that were like two SL55s. Be like, oh, people are finally starting to unload these. So your timing might be spot on and you were right because we missed the boat. We, we should have a warehouse with 10 of these in them because right. um, we could have back then for right. nothing. For in just incrementally more money, I would try and find like a Brabus car. Yeah, like a, that's a different a game. Brabus though. K, you know, a tune car. Not necessarily. Like I, I think that's still kind of under the radar because people like – you could get a Brabus car with like all the yeah. mechanical upgrades and like all the power, but without the, mm. uh, without the right. body kit and like the wheels and shit, like you know, most of them did do wheels, but like that's yeah. a really special car with a lot more power and it's just a fraction more money. And it's like pretty much under the radar, but it's like, that's something that only a, a select few will understand like that K8 badge, like, Adds a lot of value and adds a lot of performance, but no, your answer doesn't add a lot of flat. Um, next question <laughs> with an appropriate uh, username on Twitter at w two two one enjoyer. So, uh, in your opinion, what is one car that is well or perfectly suited to the media, movies, TVs, books, or songs that gave it prominence? Um, I mean, it's hard to top the DeLorean I mentioned at the beginning, uh, just because it was such a ridiculous choice that fit the movie so well. Um. Yeah. For what? Five liter Mustang. But what suited Possibly. to what though? Media is like music. Dude, yeah. Fucking Aerosmith music videos, Menace to Society, um, Basic Instinct. I was gonna uh, say Vanilla Ice. <laughs> vanilla Ice, like <laughs> you know, like. Love, love or hate any of those entities or applications like the the fox body mustang was like the darling of the 80s and 90s was. movies like twins yeah you, yeah you remember twins was there was there a fox and twins it was everywhere it was just, okay yes that was the car that they drove a red white fox like my first car yeah. like it was like an um eight. yeah those cars were ubiquitous in media and movies 
back then. That's you know why I I'm going to go more specific. Yours is personally. a good, very good, broad, all encompassing answer. I'm going to go more specific, even from my DeLorean mm -hmm. answer, and I'm going to go the Daytona from uh, Miami Vice, um, just because it is so perfectly suited to the scene. No, 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 no. Well, I don't care if it was fake, but it was supposed to be a Daytona. So I could also argue the Ferris Bueller car because I don't give a shit that that was fake either. It's a Daytona to me. And the Daytona, wasn't it a Daytona in like the first one? And then they didn't. And then after that, I think, I think like initially they got a Daytona and then they needed to switch to a kit car. But the scene with In the Air Tonight and when they're going to like kill some people and he like stops, he makes that phone call and like, oh, dude, I've never even seen the series. And I've seen that scene like a hundred times. I was going to say, I've never watched that show. So I, I, I think I've seen that episode or that After like, we scene, stop recording, I've never watched the show. We're going to watch the scene. We just have to watch the scene and you'll be like, yo, yeah, this is the shit. Um, <laughs> Bobby Reed at Bobby Reed, what is your favorite kit car that they, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, technically, my 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 heart answer is it's the car that got me into cars because it is technically a kit car, but the Ferrari from Ferris Bueller. Um, because the 250 GTO is is I think the, that specific car is like the greatest car of all time. I don't know what it is about it. It's just the car that got me into cars. And I don't care that the one of the movies a kit car. So that's like my initial answer. But in general, on the playing field of current kit car stuff, especially because they are literally five minutes from my house, um, super, super performance makes the best shit. Their, their mm -hmm. stuff is clean. They have the right licenses. I know they build a the, the, lot of the, they don't like to be called kit cars anymore, though. It's like some, something else. There's a different term for it now. Right. Factory Five in the East Coast does sick work too, um, but my I am with Superformance. They're my neighbors. I've come to know them. They're really good people, and the, everything I've driven from them, even if there's been issues here and there, just because that's the nature of that beast. Cars are sick, and the people are great. So there you go. What about you? Do you have a favorite kit yeah. car? I do. I do. And uh, it would like just off the cuff, I would say just. Superformance or Factory Five Cobra, but actually, uh, my favorite is, the, and I had to look it up to, to get the name right, but the Factory yeah. Five the Type Sixty Five Coupe, which yep. is basically their yeah. Daytona Coupe, like, yeah, like you know, it's a, there was only six of those like cars, like they're all worth tens of millions of dollars, like that. That's something. I don't know. Well, well we can. I'm trying to figure out, out if it was the Vet that was five of, but, or the Daytona um, they were five of. I feel like six was a number, but I mean, because you, you just because you went you went more specific with a model, which I like because my favorite model for a long time with Superformance was the Daytona, um, and they get the license, so they get away with calling it a Daytona, whereas Factory has to call it a Type sixty five. Same, I've driven both of them actually, and they're both great. The that was my favorite, especially being you know more of a Ford fan in general, until I drove their um, the Superformance Grand Sport. Fuck, fuck, that was the sh mm. unbelievable. I, I I still think really? the Daytona. If so, if you had to like have one as a daily driver, which is like a a dream of mine because it's ridiculous. Because it's not it's, right. It's but it'd be, it's, it would be the best to. to like show up right. to things, Starbucks drive throughs blah 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 blah. You know, like the side pipes. That Corvette was absolutely oh. just. Oh, uh, I drove two of them and what one had that? like, one had the correct, you can get it with the correct size they built back in the day. And I, no, 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 no. The, the Corvette that? had, um, it was like it was smaller than that. It was like a 370 something, something weird. Yeah. It's like some weird size. Oh, and really? then I drove on with like an LS, <laughs> like an LSA or something, you know, like some modern shit. Yeah, LS three would be fine, dude. Four four hundred horse would be fine in that. Oh, okay. The way the, the LS seven revs out and like, I, I don't know. I love that motor, and I think in any any sort of Corvette, I think it's like the perfect power plant, just because their weight, their dynamics. Seventy seven. Why is that? 
Yeah, it was original Grand Sport 377. What's that? The original Grand Sport? Yeah. I swear they were 427s, but... They were like yeah, it was, the they had a lo- all aluminum 377 small block. Yeah. And this, you can really? get a super performance no car. Sure. What's that? The competition number? I believe it was, yes. That yeah. was the competition, um, like the original and, Grand and, Sport. And, and super performance will sell you it with basically that. Um, you can get that as a crate engine from GM is what it is. You you like, you don't have to get it through super performance. The, GM sells that. Yeah. Um, uh, Myron Vernis uh, has a great question. For those of you who don't know, Myron is an amazing collector in the Midwest with just ridiculous cars. A very nice gentleman. Uh, his question is, when will cool Japanese cars have permanent have permanent place during Monterey Car Week? <laughs> um, it should have happened by now on some level. Um, but if it if it doesn't happen within the next six years, I'd be shocked. Like, you know, the first ones will be like, um, the what the fuck is that? Uh, the 2000 GT. But then they need to fast forward to like, right? I was gonna say first gen NSXs and stuff, you know, like four. the two, like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Night, like, shit was cool in like the late '60s. Japanese cars were super cool in the late '60s, early '70s, and then not really again yeah, until that's true. the mid '90s. So there needs to be like Legends There's... of the Autobahn for Japanese cars because yeah. Mean, the, the GTR values are there. Like you can't deny their collectability. You can't deny their value, their, their exclusivity. So there, there should be an event. Somebody should create an event celebrating Japanese cars of 60, 70. There, there probably is just not that yeah. we've seen like probably, you know, yeah, we need NSUs and princes and centuries. And, and there's, there is, it's funny cause there is stuff from the eighties that you and I would like, but it's not, Monterey Car Week ready, you know, like Z31s are yeah. going to be on the fucking lawn at Pebble Beach. Right. Um, right. But some of that '60s era stuff that like has to be, it, 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 and, it, and if they don't put it there, I mean, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy to go up there and like call them all racist, rich fucks. I'm I'm fine to do that. Fuck them. Fuck Pebble Beach. Myron, we'll do we'll do our own show, buddy. Just let me know. No, I can be I mad. Mean, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, fuck that place. General, I played like, golf there once. I didn't play well. Fuck that. <laughs> I think I shot a one twelve. Uh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> fuck that place. Um, no, I, I've actually never been to Monterey Car Week. Um, I, I, I just want to go Man, it's for. Shit. It's fun. I mean, I have, I have right. We've even talked about that. That's right. Shit in my life. Look. But that experience aside, like it is a, a pretty inclusive and a pretty cool weekend, like for car guys. Like I've had some of the best times with my car industry friends in the last six, seven years at Monterey Car Week. But like, you know, that's due to the company and the, the people that I associate with. Like, you know, I, I could have gone with mm-hmm. a different right. group of people and had the no, worst time No, I want to go. Ever. It, it always just, lines like, up with a fun. trip I do back east. Uh, to see my close high school, middle school friends, or usually it does. Um, and just it's now it's the middle of summer. Kids got a lot going on, um, or it will be the middle of summer. So I've never been. I've just never been to Monterey Car Week. I want to go for the historics. I want to camp at Laguna. I want to, I want to drive my Montero up and yeah, I mean, camp it's, there. It's Fuck no, <laughs> no. <It's> not <laughs> uh, Better than a Kyrie, Ir- Kyrie Irving shirt, though. Dan Mosqueda at Moscovich. We're shopping for a new car. It's our family practical car. Looking at Ford Bronco Sport, the Badlands, a Subaru USA, Forester, or Outback. A Subaru USA, because he tagged them. Subaru, Forester, or Outback. I want the turbo engine. Maybe an equivalent Volvo. I'm concerned about having a good dealer. Thoughts? There are no good dealers. <laughs> Which isn't true, but. Yeah, yeah. Um. I really like the Badlands Bronco Sport, but I, like every single Ford dealer on the planet, it's like, hey, give us more money than what they said they cost. Um, that's, that's I, I talked to Dan. Of, I, Dan and I have conversed many times, but Dan messaged me and said the Subaru dealers is selling the Matt sticker. So, so my gut says, okay, what? I don't know. Uber that's a good question. That's a good question. If it's Sport. if it's not, I. I would never, one, I'm probably never going to buy a new car 
for me. Like my wife will get a new car at some point down the road. We don't need one because, you know, the CX-5 is fine, even at 80,000 right. miles, and she drives less anyway. Um, I'm probably never getting a new car unless I, you know, win the lottery. Um, and then I can just supplement my dumb car buying with like an electric Porsche on the side or a Range Rover or something. Um, but I would never pay a dealer markup. I. I know they're everywhere, but I would just never do it. I would, I would never do it. I know, I know someone who is trying to buy a very in-demand German sports car, um, and they've bought German sports cars in the past, um, and they know people who are work on the marketing and media side of the company they're trying to buy from. I'm not. I don't want to get too specific, but you guys can all do the fucking math, read between the lines. The yeah. They put X down. They had an agreement. He called about it. They canceled his agreement. They still have his money and they wanted to pay another X, like a two X multiple of his deposit. And he's like, he's like, no. And his wife's like, just pay it. And he's like, no. He's like, well, then get the deposit back. He's like, no, I'm going to win this. And he, I don't think he is because this car, they can find another buyer in a heartbeat. But I... I appreciate him standing firm, sure. um, but it also sucks. It sucks yeah. that he had, yeah, it sucks that he was like, yeah, I'll buy it. I'll here's X it. money. Let me know mm -hmm. when it's ready. And they're like, well, here's the deal. It's like, that sucks, man. Like the car said it cost this. I mean, listen, I get it. Like, you know, people put deposits on wheels and we've had, you know, price increases on raw materials, on everything, you know, when things get delayed months, you kind of have to accept price but that's increases. You, but that's you, the, I don't know, the, man. Like, basically I, I, the I, I manufacturer could... increasing the price. This The, the manufacturer hasn't increased yeah. the price of the car. The intermediary has. That's, that's, that's the difference. That, that's the difference. That's what I'm saying. Like the dealer, the dealer thinking that they need to make increased profits because of decreased sales. Yes is a tough pill to swallow if right if the manufacturer Different. actually raised msrp that would be one thing but if the msrp remains the same and the dealers you know adding on you know mm -hmm. x percentage of value right. and you're not really getting that value then i wouldn't play that game either i would i would hold for right and there, I mean, there's the, the and it's end. funny too because you can think of crazy arguments for the flip side of it as well because like he could probably turn around and then sure even if he paid the extra, make money on the car, you know? He does want the car. He wants to drive right, it. But he yeah, he's going to put right? miles on it. Um, yes. Right. Uh, and that's why I know there's plenty of people that will accept those markups and, you know, they'll enjoy the car for just a right. couple months or whatever and then flip it and make money no. themselves. So I, I don't have sympathy for those people, but I do have sympathy for the people that have agreed on a price, ordered a car, Want a car, it's like Bronco people. Want to enjoy it. It's like Bronco to people. Keep it, like and then they they it. saw this come out and they're like, "Oh my god, I want this." Right. And the dealer's like, "You need to give us an extra, like, insane amount of money." And it's it's crazy. It's going to happen when the Z lands. It's going to happen. Um, you know, it, it, it sucks. It's it's people are like, "Oh my god, this car is coming out." Like when the GR Corolla, <laughs> it's a fucking Corolla, but it is it is an exciting one, whether you believe it or not. It is an exciting one. <laughs> Um, to, uh, and the, oh, there was actually supposed to be another question that I missed on the Corolla in the back up of the Instagram. What's up with the GR Corolla Marizzo edition? We don't know yet. We'll talk about it next week. I'm sorry. Cause I, it came out today and I didn't do a lot of research except it has like a hundred less pounds and more torque. And it sounds interesting. Um, yeah, we'll get into it next week. Um, so the, the it sucks if the, if it's a regular ish car mm -hmm. yeah like high-end stuff i'm not it sucks it's annoying it's frustrating even for those people when they're like oh you want a g-class it's another 150 and those people are like okay so like you know what then yeah. fuck that if you're gonna pay that then fuck you you could have just gone and bought a navigator and been Listen. fine <laughs> yep. that's a damn good looking car too right. Right. yeah you could have bought a Urus, whatever. Like that's how you choose your money. You you value fashion right. over actual value. Like you've got to yes. have you got to show up in this. But the like, but the the, the Bronco buyer, 
for the most part was like, I, this is so cool. I never wanted a Jeep, but I want this. And then, yeah. And, I mean, it didn't help that right. it was the value. rollout for that car, the timing was the worst with totally every much. supply chain going down. Yeah. Like that should have been the most successful rollout in like Ford's history outside of the 1964 and a half Mustang. Um, but whatever. Um, totally. It's hard totally. to blame Ford for that's a global thing, but you can blame the fucking dealers. Uh, Bradley Brownell, BC Brownell. If you went to a car museum, would you rather see a lot of cars you've never seen before or recognizable icons? For those of you who don't know, Brad's new job is the director of the Crawford Auto and Aviation Museum. Yeah, give it up for Brad. It's a hell of a position. Um, I, w- I want to see suit. both. Uh, if that makes sense. Um, I want to see cars I've never seen before and I want to see some recognizable stuff thrown in, but I'm, I am more interested in the stuff I haven't seen before, but I would like a few things sprinkled in uh, that I, that I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. It's hard for me to answer that because my taste in cars is like pornography. It's just like, I don't get excited by seeing F forties, which it would be like, <clears throat> for lack of a better reference, like a hard James reference, right? Like, how you know, dare seeing, you do that to the seeing, Ferrari F forty? I mean, isn't that come on? But it's like it's something <clears throat> that an entire generation lusted after, and like you saw it everywhere. It was just like the most ubiquitous, ubiquitous poster car, like F forty Countach. Like that was what our generation, like a good 15 year span. Like that's what we like had posters of and just wanted to see and experience. Right. And I, you know, if, if I see one of those in a museum, like seeing them on the street is a different case. Like I love to see them being used and hear them and and experience them. But like to just see them static on display like that, I'm going to walk right past that. I want to see you. I want to see the weird shit that like I've never experienced. Like I loved uh, at the Peterson uh, a couple of years ago, they had like uh, basically oh, wow. it was like an exotics of the pre-war era. So it was like Voss and like, you know, Bugattis and like Art just like, go shit. Yeah. Extravagant, extravagant. Exactly. And it was just like, we will never see this. Nobody's ever pulling up to cars and coffee in this shit. And like, I don't know anything about them and it's exciting for me to learn about not only the technology that was involved in these cars, but like, you know, the design ethos, the, you know, right. the, the cultural influence of these cars. So it's like, you know, most of these cars are made in France. A lot were made in England. Some were made in the U S and it's just like, you know, the different ways that these cars are manufactured and rebodied. And, you know, you take a Rolls Royce chassis and you'd send that, to almost anywhere in the world and have a body manufacturer build you a custom body. Right, like, right, right. Nobody does that. Imagine and if they that did, shit today. It, I, I buy a Rolls Royce. I buy a Rolls Royce ghost chassis and then I fucking take the whole fucking body off and I have my boy Italy. in fucking Italy. wherever. I'll be in Italy. Like, you know, Huntington Beach. I have a guy in Italy. I have a guy in, yeah. in New York fucking build me a bespoke yeah, But then you wind up with that. Will I <laughs> exist anymore and like those are <laughs> no because what i was gonna say i wasn't gonna just fully bag on Will I am because you know what i almost feel bad for the dude because the designs are the two cars he's shown are fucking atrocious terrible cars but i feel like he's terrible. like he he doesn't have anybody in his corner to be like yo let's just fix a few things and I, right. I, he's passionate. Right. Yeah. He's got yes man. He's surrounded by re- by yes man. And I, I had an experience in working with Will I Am, and I, we actually oh, really? declined to complete the vehicle. Like this is too far beyond like anything that we would associate ourselves with. And I'm not, not going to name names, but this car ended up getting the built. Delorean. It ended up being as atrocious as the Delorean, right? We're just like, Man, oh, okay. This thing is just too far. No, it was not. But um, the car came to us, and it was basically a, ch- a a body on chassis, but the body was one piece, 
And like, that's not sustainable. And it was also based on a Volkswagen bug chassis. And that's not sustainable for a custom car. It's just like, yo man, we need to cut this thing into pieces in order to keep it from fucking flexing and basically destroying itself. Like right. every time you enter a driveway or hit a bump on the road, like this, this is not yeah. a car. Like this is a sculpture and not how cars are built. And to do this right, we would basically just have to cut this thing apart and completely rebuild it from scratch. And unless you're interested in doing that, like we're not interested in the project. And it went down the road to somebody else and it got built and it is basically a sculpture. I don't know if that car has ever been driven and, you know, enjoyed, but it's on display in a showroom and it's just not something me personally that I was ever interested in being a part of. It's like, I'll take your money and right. build this car, but like, what do you want from it? How do you want to enjoy it? I, I, oh, you actually want to drive it? Well, just, that will never happen. Like, I just figured out the title for this culture. episode. And so it's not even put it in. You can see it later when it goes live. Um, I like I like that I can add it because I, I couldn't do that before because I used <laughs> yes, to add it when I would take notes and, and add it in later. Then I'd forget what the fuck I wanted to do. But now I can add it right into the dashboard, which is handy dandy. Um, that's all our questions for tonight. Uh, we've covered a lot of good shit. Uh, we're going to get off the air so that I can show Ron the greatest, one of the greatest scenes in television of a show that I've never watched anything else about. Um, and I think in the first two seasons, they actually used a Daytona. Right, I thought I saw some pop up. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, go to Blipshift and buy some shirts and stickers. Go to uh, Wheel Pros and buy some fucking wheels. Um, or don't. Uh, <laughs> Go to uh, 777 Style if you want to follow Mr. Ron on Instagram. Uh, I'm at Hooniverse Jeff. Go to the YouTube channel, like and subscribe. Go to the Hooniverse podcast channel specifically. Yeah. Please. I don't know if I need to say, say like uh -huh. and leave a review on like Apple iTunes anymore. We used to have to do that, and I think it mattered. But our... people uh, used to, and it used to be important. And I think it might like... still be because we've fallen off a cliff on Apple. So if anybody's listening and wants to, if you try it, I would appreciate it. I don't know if you can do that on Spotify. It's usually the link that I share, but I don't see where you can I, like. You used to be able to. I don't know. Or... We have like a shitload of older reviews where like half of them, most of them were great. And every now and then they'd be complaining and it was hilarious shit, uh, but not wrong. Um, but that's it for us. Uh, we will see you all next week. Bye. <laughs>